Welcome back to This is Van Color. What do you do when your dog swallows a bone or when your pet water dragon swallows a bell? Well, you call this veterinarian who travels around BC saving all sorts of animals domesticated and wild. And yes, his specialty is performing endoscopies on animals who, mistakenly or not, have swallowed something they definitely should not have. He's Dr. Eugene Gorodetsky, and this conversation is supported by Shelter Point Single Malt Whiskey, distinctly Vancouver Island, uniquely Shelter Point. Dr. Gorodetsky, thanks for being on the show tonight. My pleasure. How do you become the guy that you are? How are you the specialist in pulling things out of animals? Uh, full disclosure, I am technically not a specialist. Okay. I'm a general <laughs> practitioner with about 20 years of experience doing endoscopy. And you work with all sorts of animals. So I got to ask you, what was the biggest animal that you worked with? And what was the smallest animal that you worked with? Well, I have worked with large cats, so I have worked with uh, lion and cheetah. I have worked with a few uh, miniature horses, and I worked with a couple of regular-sized horses. Those were obviously the largest animals that I've... Although horses are certainly not my specialty, okay. I can operate the scope, but as to which end of the horse is the working end, that would be up to the horsey people, uh, which I'm not one of. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I, the largest dog that I've operated on was uh, 225 pounds. Okay. Wow. And the smallest animal? Uh, I have done uh, birds as small as, I believe... 80 grams, 90 grams, something along those wow, lines. Okay. Have you ever had to pull an animal out of an animal? Stuffed animals, yes, many times. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Real animals, fortunately not. Okay, that's good to know. And in total, I, I read that you've done this thousands of times? Yes, I estimated about 15,000 procedures. I that's have amazing. Done. Yeah. What is the most common thing that, I, I assume like the most common animals, probably dogs or cats, but what's the most common thing that they're swallowing or that gets stuck in their, their throat? Uh, depends. In cats, uh, it is their imagination is not uh, tremendous. Uh, they usually go for uh, hair elastics, hair ties. Okay. Or for needles and thread. Those, oh. are, those comprise probably... I'm guessing about, I don't know, 70%, 80% of what I take out of cats. Okay. Uh, there are variations on the theme. There are pieces of yoga mats and uh, pencil erasers and pieces of door stoppers and whatnot. But uh, those are not as common. In dogs, the sky is the limit. If you can oh, really? If, can, if you can imagine something that is small enough to be swallowed, it likely has been swallowed and likely has been removed. <laughs> So dogs have a greater diversity in terms of their uh, irregular diet, I guess. Uh, as far as their gastronomic habits, yes. Yeah. <laughs> What's the weirdest thing that you've ever had to pull out of an animal that even surprised you despite doing this, you know, thousands of times? Uh, there have been a few, quite a few. Uh, a few weeks ago, I have pulled out a working compass out of a, a working dog. Working compass? Yes. Uh, you could see it very clearly on the x-rays. You could still see it pointing north. What kind of uh, dog was this pulled out? Uh, it's a Labrador. Okay. Uh, it was actually on the island. Um, the Some of the more peculiar things that I have taken out, uh, let's say a toupee. Uh, <laughs> and when I pulled a toupee out, I thought that's, you know, that's the pinnacle of my career. It's That's as good as it gets. And then I pulled a second toupee out. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Both out of dogs. Yes. Okay. Both out of dogs. I have pulled out uh, an intact light bulb. I have pulled out um, oh. seven feet of poop bags, uh, the full roll of uh, waste bags. I guess once you start to eat a roll, it's kind of difficult to stop until you finish the whole thing. Oh, uh, I have pulled out two carat diamond ring. I have pulled out... Uh, enough underwear and socks and whatnot to supply a medium-sized store so yeah <laughs> wait, wait the socks wait, was that all out of one dog or no 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 okay I in have, total in the totality yeah, yes. <laughs> okay the most i have removed out of a single stomach i think was six socks six so <laughs> yeah. so the sixth sock it became a problem for that dog 
Yes, it is not uncommon, particularly for cats and sometimes for dogs. They eat things and they uh, things don't move. They sit in the stomach. Okay. And the dog is able to deal with it. The dog is clinically normal. It's active. It's happy. It's eating uh, with five socks. But for whatever reason, it eats at sock number six. And that's when it becomes unhappy and becomes clinical and taken to a veterinarian. And that's where I come in and I try to rectify the problem. So let's say you have a big dog and it's eaten a couple of your socks, but the dog itself is fine. Should you still take the dog to the vet to get it checked out? Or if it's fine, just just leave it uh don't leave it don't leave it bottom line because the reason being uh it can go one of three ways the sock can be vomited up spontaneously Mm. the the sock can be passed into in the poop Mm -hmm. and not cause any problems the sock can keep sitting in the stomach and uh, might or might not ever cause a problem but there also is a possibility that the sock will start traveling into the small intestine and will become an obstruction there because small intestine is relatively small. Right. Like the diameter of the small intestine is small and some dogs are able to pass the most amazing things. Others are not. And it's probably not a chance that you want to take because if it gets stuck in the small intestine, it is much more likely that it will end up in open surgery. Right. Okay. So much more serious if it gets to that level. Yes. Then. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you for all the work that you do. And and it's good to know to err on the side of caution if, you know, your loved pet does end up swallowing something it shouldn't have. Well, uh, one of my best sock stories was I get a phone call from a veterinarian. The dog has swallowed a sock and the owner saw it swallowed a sock that morning. Yeah. Well, what are you waiting for? Induced vomiting. The induced vomiting, the dog vomits up a sock, but it's the wrong sock. The owner owner knows uh, which sock he has ingested and they get in there and there are four more socks sitting in that stomach. I'm sure you have many of those stories, Dr. Gradetsky. A pleasure to chat with you tonight. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you, Mo. Folks, he is maybe the Van Color guest with the most unique job. I can't think of anything wilder than what he does to keep our furry, feathery, slimy and leathery friends safe. He is the traveling vet, Dr. Eugene Gradetsky. Big thank you to Shelter Point Single Malt Whiskey for supporting local conversations and local content. And now up next, what is an episode dedicated to animals without, you know, an animal? Well, a local Vancouver celebrity who is often spotted in the city's Mount Pleasant neighborhood is slowly slaughtering into studio. Stick around because he'll be here up next.